New Hope Outreach Ministries, making a difference by taking the gospel from word to action. And now, today's message. Everybody having a good day so far? That's good. Again, uh, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Uh, again, uh, nothing like it, and I appreciate you. But, you know, God didn't give me no uh, Mother's Day speech today, so <laughs> I'm only going to do what God has me to do. Is that all right? Let me start out in prayer. And the Father in heaven, thank you, Father God, for this day. Father, we give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor belong to you, and I thank you, Father. For you increase and I decrease, Father God, for I just do what you have me to do. And I give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor belong to you. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. Yeah, Mother's Day. One thing I learned. Be Mother's Day, Father's Day or any other day. That will not stop the devil from being who he is. I had a friend of mine, uh, a friend of mine, uh, he, uh, well, not, well, a friend of mine, I worked with him, and, uh, and he haven't saw his mother in years, and he's an Indian guy, haven't saw his mother in years, and, uh, so he went to go, uh, pick up his mother from Baltimore just the other day, and, uh, they had a car wreck, and she passed, he lost his mom, haven't saw his mother in over 15 years, and go pick her up for Mother's Day, and, uh, they hit a police car. His wife, she's battling, uh, she could be paralyzed. It messed up his son, it killed his mother, took his mother's life, and he was cool. He, you know what I mean? And so that's why I say that, you know, the devil stopped not being who he are, but at the same time, God never stopped being who he is either. Amen. But let's get to the, uh, to the subject today. Base scripture is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. I'm not going to hold you up today. I know y'all got plans. Well, the mothers have plans. So not going to rush, but I'm not going to hold you up either. Amen. Base scripture. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. Amen. It says. When I was a child. I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Amen. The Bible say when I was a child, I spoke as a child. You know, when I was five or six, I used to think there was monsters in the closet. You know, a thunderstorm come like the other day and. And if the thunderstorm is loud enough, I'll run in my mother's room and, and tell her monsters is coming to get me. Amen. I spoke as a child. The Bible say I understood as a child. You know, my mother used to also around by in December. She used to take me to the mall and me and my brother used to Sit on a big guy's lap, dressed up in a red outfit, amen. Red hat with bells saying, ho, 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 Merry Christmas. And I used to sit on this big fella's lap and tell him all of my desires that I wanted on this particular day. And my mother used to let this dude lie to me. <laughs> Talking about he know if I'm naughty or nice. And if I was nice, he's going to come down the chimney. And how he going to get there was reindeers. We talking about understood as a child. Now, it didn't make sense to me because we stayed in the projects. The projects didn't have a chimney. And so I was just like, how are you going to get in there? Through the front door? But, you know, I, you know, you know, I understood as a child. Amen. <laughs> to fall out, put it under my pillow. A fairy finna come the next day and put two or three dollars under my pillow because my teeth fell out. 
The Bible said the thoughts of a child. Amen. But when I became a man. <laughs> Brother Tony, I wish I would see a grown man coming down my chimney at three in the morning. <laughs> It'll be the last Christmas we celebrate. I'm not going to lie to y'all. And that's to say, I'm going somewhere with this. That's the same. That's the that's the same way when it comes to God. I don't want to have childish thinking. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 20 says what? Brethren, be not children in understanding. How be it in malice be children? Mean you see trouble take off running like a child would. But in understanding. Be men or women, of course, but you know, the Bible say be men. Amen. Well, what are you talking about? The over well, here's a few examples. A lot of people think is, you know, as soon as they give their life to the Lord. And poof, all of their problems just gone in the flash. Not knowing that it's a process to all of this. It just don't happen overnight. You have to go through a process. And if you don't believe me, Luke chapter two, verse 52 says what? Even Jesus had to go through a process. Yes. Luke chapter two, verse 52 says what? What is that? Let me get that. A process. I'm sorry, y'all. My papers are uh, sticking up here. Here we go. 52. And Jesus increased in wisdom and statue and in favor with God and man. Well, what are you talking about, Theo? Increase means make greater. Amen. You see, there's steps. There's levels you will have to experience while God is molding you to shaping you to be who he'll have you to be. But it's levels to this. Amen. Now, when you're maturing in Christ. This is real, 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 real important. When you're maturing in Christ, it's real important that you get to know who you are worshiping. Amen. Because like I just say, it just don't happen overnight. It's just like if you got to know me for the first time, you're not just going to put it all with me and tell me everything about you because you don't know me. Amen. So and that's the same way with God. You have to get to know God. You get to know God and how through that is spending time with him. Getting to know who he is, getting to know what he wants, getting to know more expectantly, or more importantly, what he expects. Amen. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 13. When you're maturing in Christ, this is real important. I'm going somewhere with this. Do that. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a baby. Amen. Now, all right, New Hope, let's break this down to the nitty. When you still a baby in Christ, you still have that eight or nine or ten year old mentality. Like we were talking about, uh, like I was talking about earlier, you feel that everything is just poof. And it just happened. You come up here, throw some oil in your face and all of a sudden everything in life is just honky dory. Well. Yes and no. And the reason why I say that, because. Some of us, when we first come to the knowledge of God, we like to tempt God. Because we don't have the full understanding of God, we're still maturing. And so some of us, and I'm going somewhere, some of us, we attempt God. For instance, say we come across the Lord, right? And we hear all the good stuff that God is doing, right? And I stay with me now, we still a baby in Christ. And so we have that eight or nine to your mentality. For instance, say uh, you went and played publishing clearing house. Amen. Now, you don't know about, you know, you like I say, you're still a baby, but you went and played pubs and clearing house or something like that. And you would say to yourself, well, I'm going to see if this God stuff real. So you'll come to church, you know what I mean? And, 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 and when it don't happen for you 
And then you start looking, ah, oh, that stuff don't work. Yeah, oh, I'm wasting my time with this. See, that's the thoughts of a baby. Amen. Is y'all with me? That's the thoughts of a baby. And the Bible said, give you a, everybody has a little mustard seed of faith. Well, that little mustard seed of faith that you did have is snatched away because the mustard seed of faith needs to be Luke chapter 17, verse 5. Let's see what that mustard seed, the reason why. And then you're not going to tempt God anyway because God knows what you're going to do before you even do it. He even knows what you're going to ask before you ask. But we're talking about the thoughts of a child here. Luke chapter 17, 5 says what? And the apostle said unto the Lord, increase our faith. And not just increase it, increase your faith daily. Why? Because this is a, this, you heard this scripture before, but it's real important. Hebrews chapter 11, verse six says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. Now, I just want to look at it. We heard that scripture plenty of times, but it's one word in there that I want to uh, really focus on. And that's the word impossible. You heard me say this before. Impossible mean not able to occur or exist or be done or to break it down to ordinary people like me. It ain't happening. Amen. We're talking about maturing in Christ. So that faith that you do have, that must have seen the faith that you do have, it needs to increase. You just can't stay at a mustard seed of faith because that can be snatched away from you. Amen. And the Bible say increase it daily. How you do that? Once again, spending time with God, getting to know who he is. And once you do that, the more and more you learning about him and the more and more you walking with him, the more and more you maturing with him. Amen. And this is. This is this is this is real important too. And definitely not waiting to come to church or others to strengthen your faith or seeking the Holy Ghost. That's baby thinking. I can be at home by myself and praise God just as much as I am when I'm with y'all. Sometimes it's even more intense. Don't ever think that you need a crowd to reach God. Stay with me. I'm going somewhere. It's real important to strengthen your personal relationship with God through scripture. Because, see, we can get dependent on other people's relationship with God. Nothing wrong with this, but stay with me. I'm going somewhere. Well, we always need someone else praying with us. We need others to fast with us. Well, what are you going to do when you can't find that person? What you going to do if you can't find them? Well, I, I've been guilty of this. People come to me and ask me to pray right there on the morning for such and such. And then if I'm not praying for them then, um, then and right there, and then when I get home, I might forget to add your prayer in my. We're talking about maturing here. Amen. It's hard. Because see, you heard me say this before. Sometimes you got to go to God for yourself. You see, it'd be some things in life. You heard me say this before. You would say, excuse me, pastor, but I need to see Jesus. I don't need to see no middle man. I need to see the man. Certain situations. Amen. Because, see, you don't want to use other people's walk with God as a crutch. Will you pray with me? That's good. Don't get me wrong. But like I said earlier, well, if they don't feel like it. Stay with me. Stay with me. This is important. Because whether that individual feel like it or not, that should never, ever stop you from pursuing God. Pursue or seek him for yourself anyway. You're going to have to anyway. What are you talking about, Theo? Because when it comes to that, when God can come back right now, it's not going to be what Hamburg family, you next. Kenesha, my wife, you go first. No, it's not going to be like that. You got to seek him for yourself. You got to seek him for yourself anyway. 
It's called a self-judgment. Individual judgment. What have you done? Y'all can see me here every week. And if my wife and children or whoever decide they don't want to come, that don't concern me. Because they don't have a heaven and hell to put me in. Because when God come back, it's Theo. What have you done? Yes, in order. Yes, I feed my family. But thus say the Lord. But when it comes to praising God, there's nothing. My family, my family, I don't feel like going to church. Fine. That's on you. I have to be here. My family is not going to take me to heaven. They have to get it for themselves. Isaiah 55, 6 said this is important. Check this out. Isaiah 55, 6. We're talking about maturing in Christ. Seek ye the Lord now. Why say now? This is the key thing in this scripture, y'all. While he may be found. What is that telling me? While he may be found. He's not going to be around. This stuff is not going to be here. You don't know when is your time. My partner didn't have a clue that he was finna lose his mother. The Bible says, seek ye while he may be found. While he may be found. I told a preacher dude one time, man, was that I know my uncle. My uncle wasn't nowhere near where they was preaching. If you have to go back, my uncle was in his 60s. If you have to go way on back when he was 14 to get a picture on his obituary. Because he was in the streets like that. Right. And so, you know, I was telling the preacher and I was hearing him. I was hearing him. You know, he was telling all this good stuff about my uncle, which I know better. You know what I mean? But oh, you know how they do at a funeral. You know, they lie. You know what I mean? Just to keep the family happy. When you know your uncle ain't even thought about God. Matter of fact, he told me one time, oh, there you go with that church stuff again. I'm going somewhere with this. So I asked the preacher, I said, well. You saw all of those nieces and nephews out there in that crowd. Why you didn't take the time out to let them know when you see this right here, when this coffin is closed, all negotiations is over with. It's over. Ain't no more praying for it and none of that. Because once that class, that casket closed, it is a done deal. That's why the Bible says, seek me while I may be found. Is you with me? Call upon me. Call upon him. Key thing in that scripture, why he is near. And why he's near and why we can seek him, we need to mature with him. Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 14 through 15. Amen. That we henceforth be no more what? No more what? Children. Children. Tossed to, throwing and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men. And cunning craftiness, whereby they lie and wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in all love, may what? May what? Grow up. And to him all things, which is the head, even Christ. Now let's break, uh, let's break uh, verse 14 down. This go back to when we were talking about earlier, I understood as a child. When you have the understanding of a child, you can be tossed to and fro and carried, meaning you just all over the place. Why is that? I'll tell you why. Because you have no foundation within yourself with your walk with God. So that means any good little thing that you can be, you just sound good to you. Hey, man. Amen. 
Anybody can tell you anything. Because you're being tossed with every little doctrine that they have out right now. Some people believe God is black with long dreadlocks. Some people believe it's, it's the soft looking white dude that you see on the fans and pictures and over your grandmama's house. There's people who I work with believe that there's 99 gods. I told y'all that. Some people believe God has a certain name. And if you don't call him by this particular name, you wrong. Some believe some people believe if you don't go to church on a certain day, then you're wrong. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter four and verse 14, children tossed and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. It's hard, eh, man. I told y'all this wasn't a uh, Mother's Day thing. <laughs> Just children. Because they cunning with their craft. Good speakers. And if you come behind a, a Pentecostal background like I have, you used to this. And the Lord, ah, and the God, ah, and the Lord, ah, 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 God told me this. God told me, shut up. God ain't told you nothing. You're too busy hacking. How can you hear from God? Ah. The Bible said they good with they speaking, cunning, craftiness. Y'all know I'm not lying. Waiting to, to deceive. Because that's all they're going to do is deceive. Not going to tell you what thus say the Lord. Amen. Ephesians chapter four, verse 15 says, speak the truth. And more importantly, grow up. Into him in all things. All things cover the board. All things mean all things. Amen. Y'all with me? Hebrews chapter 5 verse 12 through 14. Hebrews chapter 5. 12 through 14. You get that, say amen, which y'all got it up there on the screen. All right. For when for the time you ought to be teachers. You have need to one teach you again, which be the first principle of the oracles of God and are become such as have need of milk and not a strong meat. Mm. For everyone that use milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. For he is a baby. All right. 14. But strong meat belong to them that are full age. Even those by reason of use having their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. OK, what are we talking about? New Hope, you can have people been in church over 30 years. that can't even tell you Genesis chapter one. Who don't know for in the beginning God created the heavens and earth. But you will have people in the church for all this and can't even tell you that. Now, I'm not saying that I know every scripture in the Bible. Don't get me wrong. But I see you give people you give people a mustard seed of truth. And especially the truth about ourselves. We be ready to blow your head off. All because you have to still be taught the simple things about what God has said. For example, only these particular people's lives matter. Hmm. Or God only here in this certain race of people. When John 3.16 said, for God so loved the God so loved blacks. God so loved whites, Japanese, Asians, Jamaicans, Jewish, the world. Everybody matter. He didn't just come die for one, but when you a baby, 
and not mature, you think that way. And you have people still in this church, not this church, but people sitting there still think that God is just here for a certain people. Hebrews chapter five, verse 14 says solid food is for the mature people who have been trained to know right from wrong, especially, especially, especially when it comes to the word of God. But when you are a baby, in other words, not mature, you would just fall for anything. Because the Bible says study. That's how you know right from wrong, especially when it comes to this word. You have to study. Acts 17, 11, one of my favorite scriptures in the Bible. The key word in that, y'all read with me. They were more noble than those in Thessalonica. Thessalonica. And when, here's the part. Check this out. I'm going to read right here because my vision I did. And that, they, and that they received the word with all readiness of mind. Here's the key part right here. And what they do. Search the scriptures daily. Brother, those things were so. Amen. uh uh-uh. Let's see what you're talking about. They searched the scriptures, brother, these things were so. Good job, because you can leave, we can leave here right now and feeling good with emotion and all that good stuff. You know what I mean? That don't mean that we got the Holy Ghost. And even if you did, I didn't saw some people watch this Holy Spirit move and just sit there looking at everybody else like they the one crazy. No, no, no. You just don't have what they have. Amen. That's why you look at that's why you're not feeling what they feel. And to you, it's crazy. But once you mature to that level. I want to be like Brother Fred with the fires in me. I'll run all over this place yelling out fire. But I have to mature to get to that level. Oh, uh, well, and if I, because I'm not mature enough in the world, it's going to I'm going to just look at you like you're crazy. Because I'm not there. The Bible say when you are full of age. Full of age. I'm not going to hold y'all y'all. I, I, I'm trying to get there by the grace of God. I ain't going to lie to you. I don't I don't have it all together. I don't know every scripture in the Bible. I'm like that. There's somewhere in here. <laughs> I know what I read. But I'm trying to get there y'all. I, I'm trying to mature with God. You know, have a, a spiritual understanding about this journey and knowing everything in life, rather good or bad or rather so-called bad. Everything in life has reason. Now, I can call speed bumps in my life. Why? Because of decision making, because you can't blame everything on the devil. Sometimes we get in God's way. I can put my hand on that stove right now. Foul. That ain't made me do that because I know it's hot. I did it anyway. Might want to see how much good insurance I got. How about that? Since we like to tempt stuff all the time. But knowing everything in life, whether it's good or so-called bad, everything has reason. And then I also know that sometimes God would allow certain things to happen. Simple fact, he's trying to mold us and shape us to be spiritual warriors. So when you mature in Christ and a lot of stuff that happened, you already know that, okay, this is this. This is that. Because God will talk to you through his word and you won't be all shaken up and things of that nature. And a lot of things that we waiting on God to do is already done. Now, when you maturing in Christ, you will realize that you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. 
This is not on my thing. Acts chapter one, verse eight. That's not on the sheet, though, if I can get it. Acts chapter one, verse eight. A lot of things that we you like the God has already done. Now, God is not going back on the cross again. I read the scripture according to the power that worketh in my preacher. Nope. According to the power that worketh in my wife. Nope. I read the scripture that according to the power that worketh in me. Acts 1 to say, you shall what? But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Power! The other night when that script, when that storm came out, I ain't when worrying about no 31 news. I don't care how red it look. What I'm going to do is like my pastor and them told I'm going to go outside and look in that sky and I demand you not come in here. And I sit out there and look at that sky. It was the prettiest light show I ever saw. And no, no lights, no nothing of that. The Bible says you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Use it. But here's a catch 22. X5 verse 32. This not on there too, y'all. This the Holy Ghost going because it's not on there. X5, I'm, fin- I'm not going to hold y'all up. X5 32. What does it say? Here's the catch 22 to this. And we are witness to these things. And so is the Holy Ghost who God had given to them that what? Huh? Hmm. Hmm. Power. But we got to obey him. Obey him means just telling him he's going to tell you what you need to do. I ain't talking about being a super Christian. No, no. Just do what he simply tell you to do. He didn't tell me to hide in my, in my tornado thing. He told me to go outside and put some power on it. When Jesus was laying in there, he was sleep in the in the boat and his disciples was flipping all over the place. What did Jesus do? Woke up. Peace be still. And the Bible said he give you that same power to them that obey him. That them let me know that ain't for everybody. Just for them that obey. Him. Amen. I'm trying to get there, y'all. Maturing with God, not childlike. No. Philippians chapter three, verse twelve through sixteen. Can I get this in the uh, contemporary English version? G E P C. Chapter 3, verse we there. 12. I'm going into, uh, like I say, the uh, contemporary English version on this one. So it might read a little bit different than your King James Version. For those who got there, you ready? I'm trying to get there, y'all. I have not reached my goal, I am not perfect. But Christ has taken hold of me. So I keep on running and struggling to take hold of the prize. My friends, I don't feel that I have already arrived. But I forget what is behind and I struggle for what is ahead. I run toward the goal so that I can win the prize of being called to heaven. Stop right there. That's what it's all about. It's being called to heaven. I can give y'all the feel good speech on Mother's Day today all I want to. But what have meat have I give you so you can get you close to heaven? Because at the end of the day, that's what this is about. This is the prize that God offers because of what Christ Jesus has done. All of us who are what? Mature. Should think in this same. Should think in the same way. And then if you think different, God will make it clear to you. Whether it's hard way or the bad way, God will make it clear to you. He did it with me. Set me down for two and a half years down south. Oh, he made it clear. 
And I ain't been back to nothing like that in over 20 something years. But I had to mature with him. Not tempting God. Don't quit trying to tempt God. That's not going to work. Get yourself some power. Get some power. It's there. It's a gift. Use it. You just read it for yourself. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost have come upon you. Use it. And why is that? You will, be, you will see the glory of the Lord. You will see stuff that you know for a fact that God done. And you are mature with them. And even when stuff do happen, you already know that God is God. You are mature enough to know that everything on this, white, uh, this walk going to be hunky dory. If that the case, then why Jesus had to go get man nails this long in his hand and in his feet. And in my 40 plus years life, I haven't went through nothing nowhere near that. But on this walk, like we talked about a few uh, months ago, God would give you the man perfect peace. Mature. Mature with this walk. Don't wait on God to do something that he ain't already done at the cross. It's there. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm not going to hold y'all up. That's all I had today was maturing in Christ, y'all. I'm sorry, you know, it might not be one of my hype ones. <laughs> you know, I, I, I tried. Lord knows I tried. I wanted to go right there and say, God, this Mother's Day, you ain't going to give me nothing. But I'm not a mother. What I'm going to tell you. <laughs> what I'm going to tell you. <laughs> and I tried. I tried. I tried to find some, some good stuff because it's Mother's Day. But no, God, no. And I'm a big believer. God got it right the first time. So if I come in here trying to change something to make everybody hoop and holler, that's me. That wasn't God. And I'm not going to do y'all like that. Amen. Well, uh, if nothing else. Uh, anybody got. Anybody all is well. Got something to say.